I'm just going to do a very quick video to show you how I condition polymer clay. Just take my clay and I've got um, a knife here. Now you don't need to use one of these knives. You can just use any type of knife, but I've actually got one for the Fimo, so I'm using Fimo today. You're just going to cut very thin slices of it. Now polymer clay, even if it goes hard, you can always get it back to be used again. I do tend to much prefer to use the polymer clay soft, but this you, with this method you can get it to work any time. So cut yourself up some small pieces like so. Now what I would do is before I've been starting to use this, I've had this in my jumper keeping it nice and warm so it got warmed up because it quite likes to be warm. And then you can just cut that up on a tile. And then what you can do then is just go over it with your fingers, keep mashing it up until it comes into a nice soft dough. But if you do have one of these pasta machines, what's a really good idea is to just run it through the machine like so. Um, you can get these. I got mine from a charity shop. Didn't pay very much. I think two or three pound. Um, you can get them online. You can also look on places like Facebook Marketplace and eBay. So I'm just going to roll mine through my pasta machine. I've got it set on nine stop at uh, one stop off with, but I will keep moving it down as it goes. And my pasta machine, I have cleaned it, but you might see that's a few bits come out, and that sometimes happens. So if you are going to be using something like a white. You need to really, really clean it beforehand. And you see that some yellow has come out. Now I take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and I just take it up, and then I'm going to put it in again, and I'm going to change my setting. I'm going to put it on about five this time. And that will stop all the pieces from just instantly falling through. Slip my paper back underneath. I find that works really well. And then just roll it through again. And you're just going to keep carry on doing that until your clay doesn't break when you fold it in half. So as you can see now, I've just keep kept um, pushing it through and I've worked it through each one of the settings from one all the way up to, and I'm on nine now. And every time I do it, I will show you what I do. I roll it through. Just take your time. And you can see it's starting to stick together now. I fold it down in half like that. There we go. And then I'm going to just pop it right back in again. Put my paper back under. If you are going to use painting paper, use a different piece each time because otherwise you might find the colours will run on different, especially if you're using white primer or polymer clay. So now I'm going to put my clay into the pasta machine. I don't do the black until the very last, so I would condition all the other clays first and then at the end I would condition the black. Similarly with my hands, every time I use the black I'm going to have to go and wash them because it's going to stain any of the other um, clays that I'm going to be using. So that also applies to things like navy blue, dark purple, any of the really darker colours are going to stain your fingers. I don't know if you can see that my fingers are quite stained. Uh, I keep my nails short if I'm going to be doing the clay because I find otherwise you get bits of clay up inside your nails and then it all comes off onto the stuff, onto the things you're working with. So that's the black. I wouldn't use this paper again for any colour but black or a dark, much a very dark colour. The other thing I do is when I'm storing my um, clay, I always put it into a Ziploc bag. You don't need to do that because it, you need to keep it soft. The reason I do that is if you've got clay just sat around, say like this yellow here, um, can you see this? It's picked up a few other bits of clay whilst it's been on the table. I don't know if you can see that red bit there and another bit. So what I would do is keep that separate and then when I'm going to put this away, I could always put it back into its paper like so, but then what I would do is wrap that in a piece of cling film before I put it into my bag 
um, because then if you've got it in the bag what will happen is that any other colours you might have in that bag with it with, say I keep all my yellows together but some of them will be a little bit darker some will be lighter if you just put them in randomly bits of those clays would get onto the other colours which you've got there so that means just that you'd rid waste have to cut the all the sides off before you can use it so that's why I store them like that is can always be even if they're really really hard and crumbly and as you can see here by this one it was really really crumbly and I've started working on it and I will keep going until I've got a lovely smooth surface so you can either just carry on doing that with your fingers now if I wasn't using my pasta machine and I was doing that this I would break off a piece about this big and I would work that in my fingers until it was done because I don't want to hurt my hands by using a lot of pressure pushing that down so I'm just going to use a small piece at a, do a small piece at a time so you can see that's coming together really well there now so that's that small piece and then I could put that to the side what I want to do is check it so I want to fold it in half can you see that's still breaking a little bit along the edge what I want to do is keep folding it and keep kneading it until I get a nice soft edge on there and there are no cracks when I fold it in half so that it does take a while you know you can just keep going at it until you've got it how you want it to be okay so that would be that and then I would take another piece I'd put that just to one side you could keep put that into a little polythene bag and sit on it or something like that so that that just keeps that nice and warm and that will help that to stay nice and soft and supple so as you can see now look, it's hardly breaking at all when I fold it okay so just keep going until you don't get no breakages whatsoever from it and it's nice and soft all right so like that and then you just break off another piece you could put that in a polythene bag break off another piece and start doing it again you can see the difference from the one which I've been working and the one which is still really hard and it's quite hard to push down whereas this is really soft now okay so that's what you would do just to condition it and then store it in polythene bags just to keep the clay from mixing onto the others so as you can see here I'm mixing some colours together I've mixed a black and I've mixed a Fimo FX grey it's, like, it's got a matte, like a metallic -y tinge to it and I wanted this because I wanted my cauldron to look which I'm going to be making in a minute to look like it's sort of got a, a metal sheen to it so I'm just showing you this so that you can see how I would mix the clays together so we just take the different clays and you mould them together you can cut them up into tiny pieces and work a little bit at a time and then just mould them together with your hands until you get that sort of nice soft effect okay and then one other thing to remember can you see that nice soft effect that nice effect there where it's got that sort of shiny that's the sort of thing I'm looking for for my pan so you can mix any colors together with polymer clay I do believe that there is a sheet you can get which tells you what colors to mix together and how much to make diff the different colors that you might need to do um, projects because you don't really want to be buying individual things of clay for every color you want so I've got a really nice marble effect there so if you wanted to say make a work surface out of that that would make a lovely work surface with that marble effect onto it um, so that's quite nice the other thing I wanted to say was always check the um, instructions on your packets because some um, clays are different and you'd have to be careful of that if you were going to be mixing say a prima and a polym and a fimo so make sure you have look to see what whether they are compatible to be mixed together